I just did an audio a couple of minutes ago, and I'm thinking about this other individual. It's all in the same theme about truth and identity. They seem to go hand in hand. See, when you talk about truth, you're also revealing a part of yourself. And so when there is an obscurification of even a little bit about one's identity, it, it really covers other aspects about somebody, how credible they are. And so I'm going to talk about this. It's really something that here, the, the audio that I did just before this one were on people that I just saw on YouTube. Well, one of them I just learned of yesterday. And then the, per the other person is from the day before yesterday. And it's something that back to back, and I think that back to back and listening to these people, that it's affecting me. And you know, one thing I've said recently is that I'm looking for truth. I'm looking to find what reality is. Well, it's showing me, and you know, it could make you feel sick. I feel, I feel stress, as, as I mentioned in earlier videos, that I have been getting headaches at the temple, temple of my, you know, my face. And it's, it's really bothering me. I'd like to share with you this, this story regarding the 9-11 truther and how easily that I was, <laughs> that I was getting fooled. And I share this to let people know, I, you know, I'm not going to be mentioning names, um, but it's this, this is really about expressing how it made me feel and what I should try to do next time. I mean, all, I mean we could only hear and listen, but, but when we listen, try to think critically, I mean, not, I mean, I mean, really listen to what someone is saying. And sometimes something just doesn't sit right. And again, I don't get into people's business, whatever, and whatever what someone wants to share, you know, let them share. But just really listen to what they're saying and why they're saying what they're saying. So I think it was Thursday or Friday that just passed. I was um, found a a video on 9-11, you know, with the World Trade Center and the, the planes that crashed into it, etc. And this person, it's a, it was a woman, a Caucasian woman. She says she was in a particular industry for 30 years and she was retiring. And in this retirement, she wanted to become a writer and write some novels. I mean, that sounds exciting. She also added that she, uh, she wasn't a writer. And so this would be her first book. I mean, more power to her to be in an industry that's unrelated to becoming a writer. But she wants to be a fiction writer and write about her experiences. 
And in this desire, she was thinking of a, a character name for one of the people. Now, in her line of work, she meets people of all types of backgrounds. She'll, she'll probably know about names and everything like that, but she wanted to get an Arab-sounding name and use the alleged 19 uh, hijackers for the 9-11, you know, the, the thing that happened in 9-11 in, in New York City and other locations and use their name. And, 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 and I think she might have said she wanted to use a last, a last name for one person and maybe uh, the first name of another person. I mean, that, I, that didn't make sense to me. But when she went to investigate and, and get their names and to decide which name she was going to use from theirs, she reads that, uh, that some of them were actually still alive. And so, again, the credibility about the whole story of 9-11, and that is what made her want to investigate further the truth behind the hijacking with uh, the, the planes that uh, allegedly went into the building. And so she goes and investigates, and she says that because of the field that she was in, that certain protocols she would know about, and that upon investigating the stories and the uh, tapes and the recordings that the FBI had, I think she said, that it, it didn't make sense. So um, she wrote a book based on her knowledge of the field of aviation, and it became a big hit. And people started approaching her because it was such a big hit, the book. And they gave her information. They said, hey, you know, well, um, let me share you my experience or my knowledge about you know, the field of aviation or whatever, you know, some, some information that, that they could share. So that's also how she said that she was able to build her books because she has more than one book. And I, I was really fascinated with her story. But it was just that little bit about the name, you know, um, what last name or first name to use for an Arab character. And again, your line of work, you know all, hear all different types of names, but it's again linking why she would even get into the truth, what they call the truth movement within 9-11 scenario. It just didn't sit right with me. And I think my instincts were right. And then, now, I, I had watched several videos on YouTube with this person, and I wanted to buy all her books, all four of them. So I went on uh, Amazon and to check out the, the books that she has, but I wanted to get a packet of all four and one of the packets just had three. And so I thought, you know, I'll wait until, you know, maybe, you know, I'll, I'll try to look further. Maybe I'll get something that has all four together. So I continued looking at the videos with her on it. And then I came across, by chance, I think I might have, I was typing her name. And then sometimes, like, when you're on YouTube and you're typing in, you know, for a search... It'll also pop up other related um, searches with that person's name, and it says something like, you know, her name and then um, deceiver, some, something like that. So that's, that's weird. So out of curiosity, I just pressed on that one, 
And wow, I, I uh, watched more than one of that category and I feel a little stupid. <laughs> ah, I feel a little stupid because I was going to buy the books. See, it's, I mean, I buy books, but it kind of takes a lot. I, when, when I buy books, it's usually I'm in an, in an excited state and wanting this information. Like when I find something, I, 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 I buy a lot. But I just said, you know, just wait a moment, and you know. But I'm glad I did wait. So one investigator of her, some, some, no, wait a minute, I have to back up a little bit. Now, I saw more one vid video that to expose her, but she was interviewed by someone and they gave her a lot of leeway a lot of freedom of how she wanted to conduct the interview and it was over a period of days and it was all devoted to her and her books and it promoted her work but I guess um, that individual found out about her. I guess when, when you're in the 9-11 truth movement, as some people call it, you know, you all listen to each other's work and you, you learn about each other, other's work, and to increase your knowledge base. And he came, evidently, he must have come across this other researcher in 9-11 Somehow, this other investigator somehow was able to find her on the internet through just an audio tape. It was like a, like an infomercial type of thing. And in this infomercial, they claim you know, this person's claim that they were in this. Um, nutraceutical or something like that, this health thing for 30 years also, around the, the, the same time that she was doing her other line of work, which gave her the expertise to know how to investigate. So, you know, I mean, anyone could learn things and maybe practice on the side, you know, or do reading on the side during your primary occupation. But now it's like two major occupations during the same time. But the person went by a different name. So again, about identity. Now this person, somehow they were able to, this investigator was somehow able to connect the dots and discover that that person in an, in an infomercial and this woman that was interviewed by this other person, and she's an author and has several books out, and it's the same person. I listened to the tape, and it's the same voice. And I, I did notice also with her appearance, it's like, why she wear, I mean, I kind of notice, you know, the hair and the, the glasses. And it looked, it looked like a character. But the other person in the, the, the was, was a different, different, no glasses and a different color hair. And I mean, yes, women change the color of the hair, but it was just a whole different persona. And when that other interviewer who interviewed her over a period of time and promoted her books, when, they, when he found out about it, he became angry. And I think he started at that point also investigating her. See, what people don't like, like, people don't like to feel they're being played. 
And just like in the this other audio that I did, and I discussed different people, there were uh, people of color, and just something just didn't sit right with me. And then you know I shared what I shared in that audio. But even in this one, in here, this one is a Caucasian woman. But yes, something just didn't sit right, even amongst those people who uh, investigated her. I think they initially investigated her because in some of her videos that you see her uh, discussing the 9-11, it... It was something um, um, insensitive about a particular ethnic group, and it 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 kind of I mean people are entitled to like or dislike who they want to like or dislike, but if she's promoting this 9/11 truth, it, it it was just why is she saying that? I was it just, it caught me by surprise. And the person investigating her maybe might be a member of that particular group and wanted to investigate who she really represents. And I think that's what it was and why his initial investigating of her, investigation of her. But I, I think what was happening and that investigator of her and other uh, people of the truth movement, some, what, what could happen is that you can have information and then they spin it with, in this case, something uh, prejudiced against a particular group. And when you mix bigotry and 9-11, it might disqualify what might actually be true to the 9-11 movement, okay? And that could be the real issue. So what this interview individual might be saying is truth, but it's made to just be disqualified by her um, biases against a particular group and tying it, tying it in to the whole story of 9-11. And so the person that had interviewed her and promoted her books, he doesn't want to be associated with this person, and rightly so. Because if you're, if you're promoting someone, and again, you, you may not really know about the, all that other stuff, her background, and then someone put like a turd in the soft drink, you know, there's nothing wrong with the soft drink, but it's what is in it. And then you, to be associated with that person, even that person's work could be affected and disqualify you. So I think this story See, I think all of us have like a, a radar. We, some are more sensitive than others to pick up certain things. But it's something that here you might initially bite into a story because it looks and tastes good and um, you accept their word and they have a sense of credibility. But upon investigation, this person has a um, a questionable um, authority on the subject. If you say your occupation is a particular thing that led you to even discuss 9-11, and then how to link in for her to continue, because the, the men, I mean... 9-11 affected so many people, but we're not writing books. But what made her write her books was based on a, an alleged lie. Because 
there's no, no proof that she was ever in the field that she claimed that she was in. And that was another thing. It's a small community. People know one another, you know? No one is coming forward that, yeah, yeah, we used to work together, this and that. You know, it's not, it's not there. So again, how I'm going to tie this audio tape and the one that I did just prior is that when someone doesn't want you to know a basic information, where they're from, their name, their age, any one of those things, because with those information, you can ascertain so much information on a person. And no, it's not about trying to steal someone's identity so that you could profit off of them. No, I'm not. I mean, use common sense and no, don't don't put your social security number and your full birth date and your parent and mother's maiden name. No, don't don't you know, don't be foolish about what information you put out there. But just question with something that's basic when someone lies about a particular occupation that they do, that they've done for 30 plus years, and then many aliases, that was another thing. This person who researched this woman found that there was many, many aliases. See, that's another thing. We all get, you know, some of us have different names. We, we have, you know, uh, our birth names. And then we might have a little pet name. You know, maybe your mother called you a little, a, a different name, you know, in private. And then your siblings might have another name for you. And then you, your friends down the block call, have, have a different name. And then people in school might call you something else. But it's all in giving... Um, uh, expressing attributes that you have, but it's not to obscure who you are and to give a different personage to a person's identity. And I feel that this particular woman in the 9-11 truth movement is doing what she's doing for a reason. It's questionable. And again, even if the information in her books are true, what is her motive if she did if she wasn't even in the field? And if people did um, approach her because she said was in the field, you know they felt that uh, they, they can trust her because she's one of them. So that's another problem: identity. And one's what one says about themselves is, is a biggie. And so I share this so that when you go out there in, in, in the world, that listen very closely to what people tell you. Ask yourself why they're telling you what you're telling them, I mean, what they're telling you. And if they're not being honest about the little things like who, what, what the name is or what school they went to, you know, these obscuring of one's identity to find out their true identity, avoid them. So again, if you lie to others about who you are, you're really lying about yourself and you don't like yourself. You can't, this person cannot truly like herself for her to put that information out there. It's something. And they're not respecting you. People who don't respect other people's people, they cannot truly respect themselves. And that's what they're really about. They don't like themselves. So stay away from people like that you can pray for people like that because people like that I think are ultimately very dangerous and when they're found out like a serpent they're going to attack and that is what I want to prevent 
So thank you again for listening. Take care.